The spring sun shone bright above the Riverside Park in Minnesota, and I marveled at the beauty as I pulled into the almost full parking lot. Small piles of snow remained in the shaded areas, yet the penetrating rays of the sun had called people from their homes and out onto the nature trails, a welcome respite from the bitter cold that had made any outdoor break from quarantine challenging. I stepped out of my car and stretched up towards the sky, noticing stiffness from days behind the computer in my normally athletic 5'8 body. I'm so excited to take a walk in the trees instead of down a concrete sidewalk. It feels like years since I've been in nature. Hearing a motorcycle coming up the road, I turned to see my friend, Jason, headed my way. Of course he's on his bike. I shook my head and giggled. I'm not ready to de-winterize mine quite yet. He parked, and we started chatting excitedly like two schoolgirls as he removed his protective layers. We had seen each other while riding the ski lifts together here and there over the winter, but hadn't really had an opportunity for uninterrupted in-person conversation for years due to conflicting travel schedules and COVID. He locked his helmet, gave me a quick hug, and we immediately adopted a quick pace down the dirt trail through the woods and along the river. How have you been? He asked as I paused to let him lead when the trail narrowed and began to wind around trees and water holes. Are you still working hard? You know me, I replied, tucking my long blonde hair behind me as a gentle wind tried to push it in my face. Doing some massage, building my online practice, and doing the final, final edits on my book so I can get the darn thing out. Samuel's still good? He asked, referring to my former husband, whom he knew was also my landlord and roommate at the time. Yeah, the city has shifted him to another job, luckily. It's a bit week by week, but he's really grateful to have income at all right now. I just feel so lucky to have someone I get along with, who I can communicate with, and who I feel safe with. I can't imagine how stressed I would be living with some stranger who was anxious or touch-adverse. Touch is such a key part of my calming and connecting mechanism, so this whole distancing thing might kill me, if not for daily hugs and my kitty, Valentine. My body flooded with warmth thinking of my cat, who helped me through meetings by sitting on my lap and anchoring my restless body. Ah, animal love is the best. The pregnant pause that followed reminded me that Jason wasn't so lucky right now. I have to imagine it's been a bit more challenging with you, considering the impending divorce. I offered space, allowing him to say what he wanted, if anything at all. It's actually okay, he offered in a sad yet accepting tone. We get along fine, and this has been a while coming now. She still has to work and is gone most of the day, but when she is around, at least we are amicable. Plus, I'm getting in some road trips when I can. We further discussed how stressed people were and the complications everyone seemed to be experiencing as the whole culture shifted on its heels. Most everyone was trying to find stable footing. How some people were really isolating, while others created small bubbles so they could enjoy a few friends and or family members. Others seemed to be continuing on with life almost the same, work and other circumstances dictating their actions. I'm talking to a lot of people who are really feeling depressed or anxious right now, I said. Some are totally isolated and alone. Others feel trapped in their homes with family and kids all over them at all hours of the day. Even beyond health-wise, everyone is hyper-aware of how they are interacting with others at the grocery store, on the street, and in their daily lives. It is really hard to connect with people in stores, isn't it? Jason exclaimed. I try really hard to look at people in the eyes and smile and be friendly and make it show in my energy and my face, but it's really hard with these masks. It's like people don't even want to engage.